So despite the lawn mowers and leaf blowers, it's actually noisier at my house, so I figured, hey, while I'm out here, I'll give you guys another movie review. This is Unbreakable from 2000, streamed this recently added on Hulu. Hadn't seen it before. Kind of probably saw the ending somewhere uh, because I kind of knew what was happening. And uh, I think that the synopsis for this ruins some of the film, some of the revelation. But overall, I enjoyed this very much and I recommend it to just about anybody. And with that said, we're gonna be getting knee deep into spoilers here, so caution. All right, Bruce Willis uh, plays Bruce Willis, but poor. He's bald in this one. Is this his first bald movie? Like straight up bald? It, it very well may be. I think he had some hair in six cents. This is from M. Night Shyamalan, written, directed, produced. He had all the say over it. And this was quite a box office hit, not to the extent of The Sixth Sense, but I think people were looking for twists and all these things. But in the year 2000, this is a superhero meta film before the superhero genre reached critical mass. I mean, like, you're just looking around, you're like, okay, X-Men probably just came out. That's about it. Superman AWOL, Batman ain't been seen since 97. So, yeah, this is one of really like two, well, Blade was doing some stuff. That was in like, what, 98? Uh, but then came back 2002. So, you know, this is before the comic book stuff was everything. Bruce Willis is in this train wreck. He walks away completely unscathed. I really like the way the camera works here. You kind of got this perspective, this girl on the train dodging in and out between Bruce Willis and some tall chick's conversation. She says she's a sports agent. He says he's not into football. Then she doesn't want to talk to him. Understandable, he's bald. She doesn't know he's super rich. Bruce Willis, because here he's playing a normal guy. Bruce Willis, which makes it, Bruce Willis is a really unlikely looking movie star, isn't he? I mean, if you just think about it, that's because he has some charisma to him. The charisma got him everywhere. Anyhow, the train gets in wreck, he's the only survivor, he's unscratched. There's some news about this, but nobody at his work gives him a hard time about it. Uh, some guy, we learn about him in early life, he's born a baby with broken bones. He gets hurt everywhere. To get him outside, his mom buys him comic books, says there's gonna be a comic book for you, waiting for you when, you, when you're willing to go outside. Got a whole bunch of them. So he becomes a comic book collector, and he sees them as art. He thinks that there's some truth to them, and that as we're in dark times now, there could be new heroes on the way. And he's, and he says of this stuff that Bruce Willis is the only survivor of a major accident in this movie. They say there's like three major terrorist attacks. They didn't really say the train was a terrorist thing until way later. But this is a year prior to the Twin Towers going down. Pentagon Flight 93. Uh, I, I kind of wonder if there was some inspiration here. Hey, let's let's go make some terrorist attack like this guy. This guy, uh, didn't they say he bombed a building? I mean, it's not outside the possibilities here. So, Bruce Willis' son, a bit of a dweeb at school, gets picked on. He, he uh, kind of learns that his dad seems to have super strength. And he's been holding it back. He's been lying to himself. Uh, as the movie uh, slowly peels away these layers, we see that he was never sick in his life. That he faked an injury to get out of playing football so that he wouldn't lose the woman of his dreams who didn't want him to play football, which is kind of the antithesis of everything. Hey, surefire bet I just landed over here. Gonna make me rich? Nah, you don't do that. Just go be a security guard at a college football stadium. Yeah, that makes sense to me. So the wife here's a bitch, plain and simple. Played by Robin Wright Penn, that shouldn't be a surprise to you. Then on top of this, uh, he gets these abilities he discovers that he's touching people and he can sense, um, it's, it's hard to tell if it's what they did or their future. I think it's what they did. He can see their past a little bit. Uh, Oh, by the way, Samuel Jackson's the really breakable guy. They call him Mr. Glass. 
Samuel Jackson's like, hey, we need to train you to be a superhero. You're a superhero. The guy's like, no, I'm, I'm in denial about it, actually. The son believes in him. His wife's out of the, out of the picture. But uh, he goes to the subway, walks around, spreads his, his hands out, sees these images of things done. Some guy attacked and killed somebody. He follows him, goes to the house, finds the dead body like he, he pictured. He finds some kids zip tied up to some drawers, frees them. They probably could have got out of that, honestly. Drawers come out of stuff, cabinets, okay, but anyways. Yeah, he frees them. And then he goes, finds the mom, and he's gonna untie her. But then he gets attacked by the, by the killer, throws him out the window, falls in this pool. And he learns that Lake Pool is his kryptonite. That when he was a kid, he nearly drowned. But I guess he can't drown, so they just say he nearly drowned. But it brings him down some, it scares him. The kids he freed give him a pole to climb out. And then he goes and uh, choke holds the killer. Then I thought this scene was really touching, the way this was done. The next day, you got uh, Bruce Willis and mom kind of casually talking over breakfast with French toast going like a scene out of Last Action Hero. And the kid walks by. Bruce Willis has this newspaper, he folds it a little bit to show him the story. And it says, unknown hero, saves kids, parents dead. He shows him a picture and it's got him in this rain poncho that he's been wearing when he's on security. And the kid's like, wow. And he's like, no, don't tell mom. And just the way Bruce Willis did this is really calm, hush. You know, let's keep it a secret. I, I thought it was really touching. He tells the kid he was right. And now you get the sense that he's going to be doing superhero shit. He goes and sees Elijah. That's Samuel Jackson, Mr. Glass. Who, who says that he's got a, an art gallery thing going. He shows, it, he, he shows him his back room, kind of. They shake hands. And then Bruce Willis gets the vision that he was behind all the stuff. He, he was the one that got the train blown up or derailed or something. I, I'm confused about that. I, I thought that the train collided into another train because the way the sound was in that scene. But anyways, the chroma key work here, they try to do selective color, but it didn't turn out so good because in these visions, they go black and white, but they isolate a color. So like all this blue that Samuel Jackson's wearing stands out, but it's, it's very, uh, uh, shit. It's got a lot of artifacts. It's, it's very staticky. Yeah, I think I missed a technical term on that, but screw it. Anyways, uh, he's like, hey, I had to kill all these people just to find you. It was worth it. There's somebody like me, but opposite. You see, we're, we're opposites. I'm your arch nemesis. They always start out friendly in the comics. And then it's revealed that Bruce Willis led the authorities to him, and he's locked up. I wanted to see this movie because I heard about the ending of Split, which probably ruined Split for me. Reveals that it's a shared universe thing. And then, of course, now that with you, you know, we have TV commercials talking about the third film in this trilogy. Yeah, that's got to ruin shit further, doesn't it? So, in reality, I did want to see this because I want to see Split at some point here. And then maybe even in theaters catch uh, that next installment. I thought this was really good stuff. Unbreakable, solid through and through. I pointed out all the nitpicks. Three and a half out of four stars.